the next thing we're going to look at is looking at how to adjust our combine advisor package. So this is going to be our normal combine run page. We simply hit our back button and we're going to see our ICA2 button pop back up. So from here, again, we can go through our optimized performance and give us grain loss quality and straw. Uh, so since we're pretty happy with how ICA2 has that part of it set up, the next thing we're going to look at is our automation status. There go. Okay. So once we're back in ICA2, we come out of optimized performance. This is going to let us turn Harvest Smart on and off, Active Terrain on and off, and Auto Maintain, Auto Maintain on and off. So let's look at them individually. So as far as Harvest Smart goes, the purpose for Harvest Smart is to allow the machine to simply speed up or slow down according to cropping conditions. So again, it is very important that when we're adjusting Harvest Smart or making uh, setting changes in Har Harvest Smart, that one, we're in even cr even cropping conditions, and two, we've had our loss monitor already set because it uses the loss monitor to decide can it speed up or does it need to slow down based on conditions. Now, one th other thing to remember is, is our limiters down at the bottom. So if we don't want the machine to go more than four miles per hour, we simply input four miles per hour here. If we wanted to not use more than 105% of its given horsepower, we adjust that here. Because one thing that is important for Harvest Smart to work is the hydro handle here has to be pushed completely forward. So we have to make sure that whatever our maximum ground speed is, that we have that set so that we can push that hydro handle forward. The hydro handle is not completely forward inside of Harvest Smart. It will not speed up and slow down the machine. So the next thing we're going to look at is our active terrain adjustment. The purpose for active terrain adjustment is to make changes one to the fan and two to the chafer and sieve depending on um, changes in terrain. So are we have an uphill sensitivity and a downhill sensitivity. So the, when the machine is pitched up or pitched down, uh, this will allow the machine one to speed up or slow down the cleaning fan and change the opening of the chafer and the sieve depending on the amount of elevation change we have up or down according to the actual terrain. Last but not least, we're going to look at uh, auto maintain a little bit, little bit more. So once you turn um, auto maintain on, we have a responsive aggressiveness, grain loss sensitivity, broken grain sensitivity, and foreign matter sensitivity. Uh, for our grain loss sensitivity, it's just simply using the grain loss sensors that are on the rear of the machine to see where grain is going and how it's being lost. Response aggressiveness is how, it, how aggressively the machine will uh, respond to changes in any of the settings below. Now broken grain and foreign matter. Uh, the, the combine itself actually uses two Activision cameras that I'll show you once we go outside. Those Activision cameras are actually looking one in the tailings elevator and two in the clean grain elevator. And once it takes a sample in the both of those elevators, it's going to actually see what kind of grain is flowing through there. So it's going to mark grain as either broken grain or foreign matter. So if we want to see what those live view cameras look at, look like, we can either see the clean grain camera, the tailings camera, or both. So one of the things we'll see when we see the grain camera is we have the ability to turn the view grain analysis. So this will show us broken, unthreshed, foreign matter, light and heavy, and debris. So it gives us a pretty good idea of what's actually going through there. Again, we're not in the field and harvesting, so it's hard to see what these cameras look like. Uh, but like I said, rest assured that when grain's flowing, you'll actually see uh, information right here presented on this camera. Uh, one thing to remember is once you have all three turned on, this is considered our combine advisor package. You have to make sure that you set performance target. Setting that performance target uh, again will be the thing that you do right after you set up your loss. Alright, so the next thing we're going to look at is going to be um, how to set up overlap control and how to set up our, our full and empty levels. So if we're going to set up overlap control on this particular machine, we're going to hit menu. From menu, we go to applications. From applications, we go to overlap control. One thing to remember about overlap control in a Gen 4 uh, is you do not have to have a separate activation for overlap control to work. One thing that's important about overlap control in a combine, it serves the same function as section control in say a sprayer or an air seeder but what overlap control does is it lets us get more quality yield data because we're not uh, accounting for yield on the ends uh, where we could be turning with the header down 
or we haven't completely come up from our record stop height. So it's important on overlap control, one, that we turn that master on and off. If we're going to use headlands, that we turn them on and off. And the new feature that's in the Gen 4 is the ability to use boundaries. Uh, many times we want to use our boundaries to simply get into the correct field. So we've got a setup file from my John Deere that has all the boundaries. It gets us into the right field so we're recording data in the right position. Uh, but a lot of times our boundaries may not be drawn exactly perfect. When we turn those boundaries off, it will allow us to record data in any field that we want to, regardless if a boundary is there or not. So it is important in the combine that if you're going to have to harvest across a boundary, to make sure that you turn use boundaries off.